Gavin, maybe you already know this, but if not, I have, maybe I have some bad news for you. They didn't rule it an inside the park home run. They called it a triple that you ruled, scored in the air. Um, but what is just take us through that play? I mean, did you see Nolan waving you and then try to maybe stop you? And was your momentum just going too much? Could you just take us through that entire play from your perspective? Um, honestly, I, I did see Nolan. He was giving me the the go around third. Um, at the very, very last second when I was about touching third base, he, he kind of gave me the stop sign. Uh, but at that point, it was uh, it was all go from there. It was a uh, it was um, there was no stopping for sure. But, yeah, it was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things happening at one time. And, and Nolan had a lot of moving parts on his body at that point. But uh, the last thing I saw before I touched third base was Nolan's arm waving me around. So. Zach Nunez. You had a big night tonight. What, what was uh, the key to your success tonight? It seemed like you were really feeling it. Uh, just just being comfortable again, you know. Uh, me and Coach had a conversation during the game today. Um, it, it really motivated me in a way to just kind of kind of relax, you know. Um, sometimes I, I get to a point in my in my uh, my game where I, I kind of try to do too much and I, I put too much pressure on myself and. Uh, and coach knows how to how to get that out of me and get that uh, get me back in a form that I need to be in, and, and he did that for me today, and that's that's kind of what happened and how how I ran with it. So, James Crepia, you were clearly picking up the ball out of Walker's hand pretty nicely uh, with a I mean, double, triple, and a homer. Was there something in particular that that you were picking up, or was it just a timing thing? Especially, I mean, the the home run was no doubt as soon as left the bat. So. Was it a timing aspect? Were you just seeing it well uh, out of his hand, uh, walking through this, your perspective on how you were able to hit him so well? To be honest, I was just hitting, um, just trying to play the game of baseball and just trying to get a fastball I can hit. And uh, I was able to put a couple of good swings on some balls and it just kind of went from there. Jack Doucette. Hey, Gavin, uh, a long, long time ago when you were playing Gonzaga earlier today, uh, the first inning of the game there uh, that you guys loaded up the bases, nobody out. It could have really imploded on you guys and the season could have been over. Just can you talk about how AJ fought through that and how you guys, you know, just fought through that, uh, th those early struggles? To be honest, uh, hats off to AJ for, for how he handled himself and how he threw that game. Um, it was amazing to see, uh, amazing to play defense behind. Um, he, he threw a hell of a game and he, he really did. He, he, he put his head down and he just started he started shoving and that's uh that's what he's been doing all year he's maybe had a couple of bad starts here and there um but at the end of the day he he's capable of doing that every time and it was it was awesome to see that and i, I believe in aj labus every day of the week and um but yeah no um since we've been here we've been in a lot of uh tough situations so far and, and pretty much our whole season's kind of been like that and um our team it, it doesn't seem to to show that they're they're nervous in these types of situations, they they seem to embrace it, and it's uh it's pretty awesome to see. And uh, hopefully, we can come out tomorrow and uh, continue to play like that. Glenn West. Yeah, hey Gavin, I know you've been through your fair share of you know postseason battles, and you've probably watched them growing up at LSU. I mean, it just seems like there's always you know every postseason a magical play or something that happens with this program uh, in the postseason. I mean, just did that feel like a, one of those kind of tide turning plays there when you rounded third place and went home and just, I guess, talk about the confidence that it gave you guys and the momentum it gave you guys in the dugout after that, 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 that run. Uh, possibly, uh, maybe so. Um, honestly, I, I think our pitching staff is, has been the highlight of the weekend. Um, these guys have come in, they've, they've done a, a great job of um, holding these teams to, to what they've done and, and they've been throwing a lot of strikes and just giving this opportunity to stay in games and, I, I attribute everything to the pitching staff at the moment. We, we, um, we as hitters uh, have been have been doing a good job of kind of competing at the at the plate, but our pitching staff has been lights out, and it's it's awesome to see. Let's go to Jeff with Odyssey Sports. Oh, hold on, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so after the first Gonzaga matchup, the there was some lineup shuffles. Dylan got moved back up to lead off. And it just seemed like having him at the top of the order just sparked everything in turn, especially early in the game. You know, can you talk about the impact of having him out there and just, I think he's batting like 700 since <laughs> the movement to the top. You know, how, how has that kind of impacted the offense as a whole? Um, obviously, you want to get your, your your guy as many bats as you can. Uh, Dylan's a great player. Um, so I know I know putting him in that leadoff spot gets him the opportunity to hit more than uh, than most. And, that, and that's uh, pretty awesome for us because he's, uh, he's seeing some sort of uh, – 
something and it's not a baseball right now. It's something pretty big. Um, but yeah, no, Dylan, Dylan's a great player, a great human being. Um, it's awesome to play next to him. Uh, he, he's a game changer. He's uh, he's one of those guys that you come to the field every day and you're just amazed by what he does every day. So it's a, it's a, it's a humble uh, thing to be able to play with him every day. And I appreciate him as a teammate. He's awesome. Wilson Alexander. So you get I don't think we've actually asked you about Javen Coleman. Obviously, y'all don't win that game without him tonight. What has it been like watching him kind of develop over the last half of the season and turn into someone who can go and do what he did tonight? I love that guy. He's uh, he's become a horse, and uh, it's just awesome to see. Just like just like all the freshmen we have on this team that have stepped up and just taken big roles in this team, and, and just has brought us to where we are today. To be honest, and and, and Javen's one of those guys that we've kind of put our. Uh, hands on his back and he, he's kind of just ran with us um, and uh, I couldn't be more thankful for Javen. He's uh, he's been a bulldog for us and it's uh, it's just awesome to see, like I said. One more for you, Gavin. Let's go to Brian Holler. Hey, Gavin, you were here with, uh, with Devin in 2019, obviously a crazy gutsy performance against Florida State that fell short, uh, amazingly. Um, what did it mean to you to kind of see him out there and be able to close one out like he did tonight and, and where he's come since then? Uh, to be honest, uh, while I was in the outfield, I kind of had a thought about that. Uh, I was in the dugout at the time whenever Devin was uh, was doing his thing against Florida State. And uh, it was pretty uh, pretty awesome to see that today because um, I know Devin wanted to get another opportunity in, in regional play, you know, because he, he, he's done so well in the past. And I know he just wanted to to kind of finish off what, he's, what he started. So it was um, it was pretty cool, definitely. All right. Thanks, Gavin. Best of luck tomorrow. Thanks, guys. God bless.